Hey friends, John Sonville here again, and welcome back to part two of the two-part drawing tutorial series. Um, you can watch part one. I'll put an annotation up above here. You can check that out. Basically, it demonstrates how we get to this stage, which is the initial guidelines before we get onto other details like shading, uh, refining the features a little bit. I'll be talking about in this video. Okay, so I just turned off the those guidelines that we first started off with in the first video, and I'm gonna decrease the opacity of this layer and add a new one so we can draw over it and now basically what I'll be doing is refining this face. In this stage I use the airbrush tool it just gives you really nice lines and it's really easy to draw with and just zoom in on the face. Okay. So what I'm going to start with is outlining the eyes, okay? So I'll just start with the, near the tear duct and just carefully place in the upper eyelid. Like that. And just around the end here, the bottom part of the eye just comes around, around, and back up, and connects with the tear duct. Okay. Now I'm just going to go ahead and quickly reproduce this on the other side and I'll just go into time lapse for this. Okay, and there we go. Now you may notice that it's not perfect, it's not a perfect replica of this eye, but you shouldn't worry about that too much. In very rare cases a human face is perfectly symmetrical, so don't worry about sym symmetry, it doesn't matter if there's just some things that are slightly off. Now I will sketch the iris. And notice that the bottom of the iris just about touches the bottom of the eyelid. And I'll do the same for the other side. Okay. There we go. From these lines, like the nose bridge, I leave out when doing this kind of process because you can define these areas by shading rather than drawing the lines because if you add too many lines to a face, it'll end up uh, looking older. So an older person generally has more wrinkles on their face, so we don't want that at this stage. I could probably make a separate video about that. So for now we're just going to move on to the next darkest place of the face which is the nostrils. So I'm just going to start from the bottom of the nose here and then sketch out the nostrils. Now the nostrils curve up and then around like so back in again just like that and I'll do the same for the other side edges of the nose here you can give a bit of definition as it tends to do in real life. Now we're gonna have a light source coming from this way so as for this side of the nose the outline will be a little less distinct. Yeah. 
Okay. Now we will move on to the mouth. When I draw a mouth, I gen generally uh, put more emphasis on when deciding which places are the darkest on this V shape here in the middle. That's where I think there tends to be more shadow, kind of. And then as it spans out, it tends to get a bit lighter. And then at the corners of the mouth, it gets a bit darker. Okay. And just do the same for the other side. By giving the mouth this sort of downward hook at the end, it, it just gives the uh, character sort of a normal kind of expression. Not too happy, not too sad. And I'll just add the bottom lip define that. Now that we have those down we can move on to the side of the face. Now as you can see this um, face appears to be kind of like a slightly older, maybe mid 30s, 40s kind of face. If you want to make them look younger, what you would do is first of all make less lines on the face itself. Uh, you would m make the chin slightly narrower. Younger people tend to have sort of sharp angles and a pointy chin. The eyes play a crucial role as well. Middle-aged people's eyelids tend to cover more of the top half of their eyes so that's probably something you want to take into account yeah, I'll just work on this other side so that's that let's do these ears Now for the inside of the ear, if you study the shape of an ear, it's going to be a little different since we're looking at it from the front. So there's this part that curves around up here and then goes back. And then you have like a sort of lump of, <laughs> I don't know, it's like, uh, don't know what you call it, but it uh, curves around up here, then it comes back down, and since it's obscured, you need a, you get the idea, you know. And just do the same for the other side. I'll just do the eyebrow, I guess technique I do to make a character look calm and collected is add the fold of the upper eyelid just above the eye. Now not all people have this specific feature but it's just something I like to add and it just gives your character that sort of calm look. And one other thing I do is uh, I darken this top part of the where the eyelashes should be, make it a bit darker, and it adds to that feeling of like this character is he's cool, he's collected, you know. If you look at my um, most of my character designs, I do this quite a lot. So, as you can see, the difference. That's just one technique. I'll just leave it on for now. Um, I'll add in the pupils. Just draw a dot in the middle of the circle. That's all you need to do for that. So, for now, we'll just leave the top part of the head empty. Because I am going to get into some shading now. So... 
that's what it looks like without the guidelines from before. But I'll leave those on for now because that'll help me with shading. Now I won't do a fully rendered image of this as a time lapse because I won't have enough time to get it all covered but I'll just show you my technique of shading just to give you an idea and we'll see how that goes. So when I'm shading uh, just make a new layer for the shading and I make it underneath all the guides that's just convenient when um, I'm drawing I can keep within the black lines not draw over them so anyway if I'm shading black and white or coloring I use the marker brush it's my favorite brush to use and what I'll do is I'll get the midtones down. So, say this. Make sure you can pick a color that is darker and lighter than this color. So, what you can do is you can just shade over everything. This is just for digital painting. Um, Yep, so you can just shade over everything. You don't have to worry about rubbing out the edges, you can just worry about that later. All you want to do is just get your shading done. So, once I have the, all this mid-tone down, I then move on to shadows. And I suggest that you practice understanding how light bounces off the form and that'll really help you know where to place the shadows and stuff. So getting this market tool I will add some shadows so for example you'll get shadows here due to the nose just along this surface and this bit here sticks out because of the cheek muscles these places here so you'll get shadow underneath underneath this cheekbone uh, under the lip and since the chin is round you'll get it sort of around like so you also get it under the nose if the lights coming from this way the nose itself will cast a shadow going down the bottom. You get shadows under the eyes because this is basically the eyeball here and it's sort of pushing the skin out. So there will be some shadows under there. Um, another part is see this sphere? the light w will cast a shadow around this sphere that we established earlier and also this area will be in shadow okay another typical place is the top of the eyes here this is where the eye socket of the skull is the eyeball here will be pushing out so there will be it'll be lighter up here but otherwise it'll be darker around the edge okay and maybe you'll have a little bit of shadow from where the cheek sticks out there also there's that place I can't remember the name for it it's just under the nose and above the top of the top lip that is another place where you'll get shadow also if your character is sorry no you'll get shadow across here because this portion of the mouth will is actually protruding so you'll get shadow there and maybe on the edge of this cheekbone like so Okay, and also this air will be 
entirely in shadow. Now for highlights, change to a lighter color, almost white, and add in highlights where the light will be bouncing right off. So along this part of the nose mainly, around the sphere, around that surface, uh, you'll get a bit of light on this surface here of the mouth, uh, on the surface of the cheek, a little bit out from the eyeball, bottom of the eye, um, above the eye here, and if you make it a bit bigger on these the cheeks um, on the chin the very tip of the chin uh, you get the idea just anywhere that's uh, protruding out and actually I just noticed um, it's a bit obscured there so there will be a little bit of shadow there okay and then from there I just grab the blur tool and just blend it all as best I can okay and this is a very very slow process well for me someone of my caliber so you just blend it as best you can and what I do is I make keep making layers and just keeping keep adding more layers you know keep going doing what we just did keep on going keep adding more layers on top on top on top and eventually it'll look better um, one thing I didn't go through is the lips make it a slightly dark color and what I do is I just shade over the lips now the shape of the lips is as follows um, I'll just go use the pen tool there's a V that corresponds to this V here goes up down and just curves around to the end of the corners of the mouth so up down curve and then for the bottom it doesn't quite touch the corner of the mouth in my style anyway you can do that if you want it first of all in the middle the lip is like two balloons well not balloons but two spheres actually and um so therefore it has this these well it's really messy I hope you can see that it curves like that and then like that at the bottom okay so I'll just get rid of that so just keep that in mind when you're shading in the lips and as I was talking about before the two spheres so there will be shadow on one side and then a shadow going down the middle and then so therefore you'll have highlights going along there and on that side so that's the mouth that's the lips I'm just doing this as fast as I can right now so and then when when you're pretty happy with what you've got you can erase the outside oh one thing the eyes 
you can just erase inside the eyes okay it's not perfect I'm just trying to go as fast as I can and for eyes they're mainly dark at the top this is how I draw them very dark at the top Oops. but around the edges is where they're also dark leaving this middle area a light color but it varies from person to person some people have brown eyes which are like fully dark all around so keep that in mind and what you want to do is uh, add highlights as well it just adds that sort of liveliness to your character gives them life you can add a secondary dot as well if you feel like it um, oops. so I can turn off that bottom guide and what else do I need to cover and oh one thing you must keep in mind is that the eyes are not always perfectly white they are in shadow so what I like to do is make a new layer <coughs> uh, have it above your skin color layer and <coughs> for me using the airbrush I turn the density up to a hundred so, and make it black so it's fully black and I just draw where the shadows will be so around there <laughs> the character really has that relaxed look now and once you have that you can turn the opacity down of the layer to the right degree of shadow should you want that and just merge it down if you want or you can just keep all the layers separate it's up to you you're the artist okay I'll very quickly skim the hair because I won't have enough time to finish this completely so here basically this is the top of the skull right so the the hair line is two-thirds from this distance just above the eyebrows count it into thirds two-thirds and this is where the hairline is now when you're drawing hair it's important to just keep it in clumps, keep it simple when you're just starting off. So say let's give them uh, uh, what do you call it, like a when you have that wave that just goes up so you just keep it simple don't draw each like individual strand going up no that that just looks kinda messy and sometimes it can waste a bit of time just draw like simple triangles and that will allow you later on to for example in my case use the brush tool I love the brush tool because it has those little lines it sort of has the texture of here and you can sort of just let the brush do the work for you I know this looks really messy, I'm just trying to go as fast as I can. Um, don't actually do that in real life, like don't rush, just take it easy.
and if you grab the hairbrush you can sort of add the tufts of hair make it look more realistic now the hair will have uh, places where there will be highlights so like say Actually, I'm not very around the edge there. No, you kind of get the idea, right? Just uh, and then shadows on the other side. But you know, there are many different kinds of hairstyles you can add to your character. Uh, Check out some of my speed paint videos if you want to get an idea of how I draw hairstyles. But yeah, I can't go into too much detail there. Anyway, I hope you kind of learned something from this tutorial. Uh, I have very limited time to actually go fully into detail about stuff, but hopefully in the near future I'll be able to, you know, upload uh, more detailed explanations. For my next drawing tutorial, I'll do the same thing, except for a woman's face. So, uh, yeah, subscribe, keep up with my videos, you, you'll find that video soon. Um, once again, hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your own drawings.